Welcome to the 25 Years of the Forum Tunbridge Wells Anniversary Edition. I'm currently on my way to T Wells on the most infuriating road on the planet because all it takes is, as you can probably just about make up at the top there, is one Tesco's lorry on this road and it grinds to a halt for the entire 30 miles of it. I used to have to commute this on a daily basis. It was actually a big catalyst in getting a bike was to get around this. And the only reason that I'm not blasting around all of this traffic now is because I get to chat to you instead. So, you know, win-win. Um, yeah. Today is the launch of an exhibition that's going to be running at the Trinity Arts Centre for, I think, the rest of this month leading into October. And it is... Uh, photo exhibition as far as I'm aware there might be a few other things I don't know yet of the history of the Tunbridge Wells Forum which is pretty much where I learn everything uh, it's a bold statement to make but it's actually true it was a really important part of my growing up it's a real sort of a center point for music culture and alternative culture not just in Tunbridge Wells, but in the surrounding area. And the, the very existence of it as of a venue has been crucial to so many artists in the 25 years that it's existed. And you might think that that's changed with the way that the music industry works now and the fact that bands seem to manage to be able to get themselves onto major labels or have some kind of following from doing no shows whatsoever and just working with PR and social media teams but the fact of the matter is that that has always been the case there are bands and artists that manage to be mediocre enough to not have to do the the circuits and work the way up and build a fan base from playing and doing shows and then there's the other lot that graft day in day out to build up a following learn the craft and become great artists and I'm really really happy to say that I was able to experience that with so many fantastic people in the time that I spent working there and that I got to see before I was working there and for many, many years since. It's really, really nice to be uh, contacted and asked to, to come and spend some time and see some, um, hopefully some old faces and familiar people and all of the people that have been there since because it's a really long time since I've been involved with it, I think it was probably about 2003, 2004 that I, I kind of could completely dried up my relationship with everyone there and doing things. And I, the, for the time that I was there, I got to do just about everything. I ran the bar, I cleaned the floor and the toilets, I booked bands, I organized the calendar and the schedule, tried to put programs together, ran the local Monday night showcase, um, just about everything. So it was certainly not with um, without a heavy heart that I said goodbye to it all, but at the time it wasn't it wasn't able to give me what I needed and uh, and I've kind of regretted it ever since really. Uh, but that's you know that's the way it goes right that's that's growing that's part of growing up and if I hadn't have done that then there's so many other things that I'd never have experienced so it's not all bad and it's always really nice every time I come back and whether that is a punter going and watching something um, and getting to catch up with everybody 
or whether it's as an artist and going back and playing in bands which I've done a couple of times and and it's been really great every time and it's not just because it's been a load of uh, old friends and stuff coming and, and watching us play but because it's a great venue it's got an amazing sound system and um, the space is just the perfect size it still amazes me how you can have such impact from such a small interaction with a group of people and uh, and also just how strong that or that sort of tribalistic feel and community spirit really is when it comes to music and you know if it wasn't for the forum there's a lot of things that I would have never been exposed to and I'd probably never have heard there was a really big thing for like post rock and math rock bands with everyone that worked there but that had driven out of a few people being really into the original DC hardcore scene and um, you know all of these like post punk bands and getting to be able to have like the first exposures to people like Slint and Tortoise and you know it was just really something that I wasn't expecting when what I was familiar with at the time was the same as every other teenager you pick up Kerrang every week and you get told to listen to Green Day or you get told to listen to Nirvana or Marilyn Manson or you know whatever it is that the labels want to push and so therefore the magazines have to take because they sell covers and then you're suddenly in this world where you get these diverse people that all listen to completely different stuff and you get to get to to expand your horizons and hear new things and it was everything like we used to have Natty and Dweller who I've no doubt I'll end up seeing at some point tonight um, that ran the DEFCON label they introduced totally different strains of hip-hop that I I never knew existed like suddenly there was this amazing UK hip-hop scene and that's making a bit of a comeback now as well which is great um, and even like drum and bass and um, you know some of the sort of dance uh, genres that weren't just like club mainstream stuff all of that I discovered through working every single day of my life for four years in a music venue it was it was an amazing education for a long time my life just revolved around this tiny little quarter mile circle it's just a shame it's in Tunbridge Wells best friends lived in a house just there I had my car stolen from up there countless times there it is awesome speak of the devils and they shall appear